Hey guys, welcome to episode 50 of Reptile Mountain TV. This is Phineas, a gorgeous, classic, northern blue tongue skink, Taliqua skinkoides intermedia. He fathered a litter this year, and hopefully he will again next year. And today, we're gonna talk to you about five mistakes that new blue tongue skink keepers make. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And this is Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal-focused. Okay guys, mistake number one that I've observed, some new keepers tend to snub their nose at dog food in uh, for sake of feeding them a homemade mix, what I call homebrew. And I've already done a video on why dog food is actually far superior to um, to homebrew and uh, so go check that video out but I'll, I will say this uh, about one-third of my viewers are below the age of 30 and so one-third of you all are younger than animals that have been born and raised exclusively on dog food now that can't be said that I'm aware of for homebrew essentially homebrew is um, missing the mark with nutrition in some aspect now, not all dog foods are great, so you have to pick a quality one, and you might want to look into, you know, Dog Food Advisor, so that um, you're making sure you're not getting foods that have had lots of recalls, because not all dog foods are created equal. But the quality, good ones, actually produce healthy, thriving, um, amazing animals, and they live much longer and are much healthier than animals may, uh, raised on homebrew. I'm sorry, but there's better foods than just raw chicken or, or chicken breast, hamburger meat, and some zucchini and lettuce and crickets. It's not going to be a long-term effective thing. Your animal basically has a slow death of malnutrition if fed a homebrew compared to dog food. Now you can include dog food and that will raise the level of your homebrew significantly. In fact, if you go to the bluetongueskink.org food chart that most everybody sees, one of the frequently fed foods that's suggested is cat food and dog food because it helps you hit that mark. So, one of the, the first mistake folks do is they snub dog food thinking that something else might be healthier when it's just not. Mistake number two, very common, is actually misidentification of the species they've purchased. I want you to pay real close attention, guys. This. This is a northern blue tongue skink, Taliqua skinkoides intermedia. This is a northern blue tongue skink. This. I want you to look at the pattern. Do you see the dark pot portholes? These black pieces that turn into light in the center here? Do you see the gold along the side? It's not always gold, but do you see the difference here? Do you notice that the legs have zero black on them? They're not solid black legs. Do you notice how the head is a lighter color? Do you see this? This is a northern blue tongue skink. This, okay? Lots and lots of people are intending to buy northerns because, in my opinion, they're one of the best skink pets you can get. Northerns and Easterns are my absolute favorites, and they are big, they're girthy, they, they uh, are far more forgiving with humidity, and um, uh, they're almost all captive bred. They should be. They should all be captive born and bred. Now, Indonesians is what commonly gets mixed in, is um, folks will accidentally buy an Ind Indonesian thinking they're buying a Northern, and it has black legs black legs, not black, okay? And folks will go to a, a reptile store or an expo and the dude uh, will be like, yeah, it's a northern, it's CB. Well, actually that means captive born and it's an Indonesian. It is not a northern. So a lot of folks will misidentify and get something maybe they didn't really want that has a little bit more um, detailed care because a northern you don't have to focus as hard on humidity as you do on Indonesian species they need high humidity Google Indonesian relative humidity you're gonna get 70 to 90 percent for the whole country they're gonna need humidity so um, one of the most common things that folks do is they misidentify their animal so if you haven't purchased one yet when you go to purchase one take a picture of it with your phone we've got 
probably got some Wi-Fi connectivity or at least 4G or LTE or whatever and you know from that commercial with the guy with the mic drop or whatever you got right whatever it is use that to get online go to a Facebook group and post it and say is this what it they're saying it is and people will give you an answer and most of the time people will know right off the bat but this this is what a northern looks like guys this is a classic northern blue tongue skink they're not that variable to the point where they've got full black legs and bands all the way around and they're not dark green, okay? So um, that's number two most common mistake is misidentification of species. So mistake number three, guys, uh, kind of goes right along with the uh, misidentification of species is improper substrate. So often I will see a Indonesian species on aspen bedding. And unless you live where the actual humidity in the enclosure by default is above 70%, um, then that substrate is, is way too dry. The animals need a substrate that's going to facilitate high humidity, and aspen rarely facilitates high humidity. So you're gonna need to put an Indonesian or an Irian Jaya or a Maruki or a Tanimbar or a Key Island. Those species are and subspecies are going to need a substrate that's going to facilitate higher humidity because all of those animals come from a tropical region and tropical regions near Indonesia and in Indonesia are high humidity which means you're gonna need something like orchid bark, cypress mulch, um, even simply topsoil or some of those other reptile specific um, substrates that are designed for higher humidity, even cocoa husk. And I've done a whole uh, episode on substrates, so I encourage you to go check that out. But often, if you put an Indonesian on a aspen bedding, you're going to probably have problems with shedding and problems with respiratory pro uh, issues because the animal is going to be in an environment that's too low of humidity for their welfare, and it's actually gonna do them harm. So mistake number three, improper substrate, which kind of leads to improper humidity. Mistake number four, choosing to allow the internet experts, including me, to diagnose a medical issue with your animal. Um, yeah, some things are pretty minor and you can say, hey, what's going on with this? But as soon as somebody suggests you should go to the vet, that should be the very first thing you should do. Because the mistake is that folks will choose to listen to home remedies and um, uh, folks on the internet saying, oh, well, it's this or it could be this, and, and instead of just going to a vet. Not all vets know everything about blue tongues, and I'll agree with that. However, it's a heck of a better start than the person on the internet. Because at least when you go to a vet, you know that they've probably gone to vet school and they've done a smidge of studying, whereas you don't know if the person giving you advice on the internet is a six-year-old girl or a professional veterinarian. So I encourage you to not just take advice online about your animal's health but actually seek out a, a trained reptilian vet. All right, number five, allowing this animal to play with other animals. So uh, specifically dogs and cats. Dogs and cats are predators. These guys are omnivores. Um, they don't do a lot of predation and they don't have a high defense mechanism other than stick their tongue out and say, ah, you know, I'm a blue tongue skink and maybe they have some caudal autonomy and they have runaway, uh, they have their, you know, a runaway mode where they can run. Problem is these guys move in and if these guys move, they can very much look like prey. And I know that I'm sure that you have really good understanding of the behavior of your pet mammals to an extent, but they are still animals. They are not civilized. They may be very domesticated, but they are not civilized. And there are some primitive instincts still left in your dog and cat. And if this little animal at any time makes a little movement that triggers a predator response in your animal, 
this little animal can die. And I have seen lots of posts on different forums of folks going, oh look, my cat loves to play with my skink and my skink loves it. Well, first of all, they don't have cognitive appraisal, so they don't love it. They can't assign value to that because it's not in their brain cap capacity to do that. Um, that's just biology, just like if you don't have taste buds, you can't taste, right? So. These guys, they can't sign value, so they're not loving it, okay? Um, they may be tolerating it, they may be doing something with it, but um, your animals, uh, if you're putting them with a cat or a dog, the chances are high that there's gonna be an accident eventually. Um, and I've seen this, actually, quite often. Where you'll see someone post with this, and someone will say, I don't recommend doing that, I don't recommend doing that, and then later, um, I've had two incidents where people messaged me. They're not online anymore, but they've messaged me saying, hey, um, just want you to know when you get a chance, my Bluey died. Um, and I'll go, how did it die? Uh, my cat, my cat attacked it out of nowhere. It happens because cats are not civilized. They may act civilized and snooty. <laughs> Dogs may act snooty. They are domesticated but they are still animals that have predator responses. And if this at all moves like a prey, it could cause devastating damage. I even know someone who just recently um, lost a family dog, a littler dog, to a bigger dog because of a random um, primitive response. And it had nothing to do with how well they knew the animal. It came out of nowhere. It had nothing to do with their skills as a behaviorist. It came out of nowhere. Things come out of nowhere with animals. So one of the biggest mistakes people do is they go, I'm gonna put my skink and hang out with, have it hang out with my dog or my cat. And later down the line, their skink dies at the hands or the paws or jaws of their dog or their cat. I recommend not doing that. So. What do you think, Pica or Phineas? Guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And um, as always, remember, opinion is not fact. I'll catch you on another episode.